Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me here today. As always, smash that like button now and subscribe. Okay, today's topic, uh, the weather. The weather, it's a beautiful sunny day. It's January, it's going to be about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So it feels like 70 because it's been so cold. So I'm going to work a little while today on the outside and finish up this big job we've been working on. <clears throat> Glad to get that done this time of year when you have an outside job. Sometimes it's difficult to finish it up with the weather. So I'm very uh, grateful to have this beautiful day and yesterday also. But back to the topic for today. The topic is going to be do looks matter? Do looks matter? What do you think? Some people think that if you don't look a certain way, you can never get a beautiful girl. Some people think if you don't look a certain way, or you're not a certain height, or you don't have a certain education even, you don't have a certain degree, which someone can look at, that you won't get a, you won't get a high-end job or career, or whatever you're trying to get, or the most beautiful girl, uh, respect, uh, power. And here's what I'm going to tell you about looks. Yes, looks do matter, but for a man, now I'm not, going, I'm not negating women, but we're just talking about men here today. Well, we may talk about women too. But looks matter, and with a man, there's a lot you can do to improve your looks. I suppose for a woman, there's a lot she can do too, makeup, plastic surgery. In Colombia, it seemed like, seems like the thing to do there is to have a nose job and a boob job. Very common. Plastic surgery, capital of the world. No, I think uh, there's another country that does more than they do, but there's a lot going on down there. <coughs> but as far as men go, I've seen men that were lacking in the looks department pick up some beautiful women, go out with some beautiful women, and marry some beautiful women. So, in my opinion, I don't think looks really do matter. They will get your foot in the door. And of course, women are attracted to good looking men. But I'm telling you what, if you open your mouth and you don't have a game, and what I mean by game is not like <clears throat> a lot of lies or, or lines or anything like that. I mean by if you open your mouth and you don't have inner strength, or you're not the man that you appear to be by your looks, she's not going to be attracted to you. Very few women will go out with a man just to have sex. Now, many men will go out with a woman just to have sex, but women are a little different. She's more attracted to your inner strength, your character, what you are on the inside. And women are very intuitive. As soon as you open your mouth and start speaking, she's going to figure out what you are on the inside. It's possible you may be able to fool her for a short time, but if you do, <clears throat> you'll both end up disappointed because in your case, maybe you want to have something with her or make you, maybe you really like this girl. And when she, just, she figures out that you're not what you portray yourself to be by your looks and what you're saying, she'll be disappointed also. And she'll be telling you that uh, she's busy, uh, it's not you, it's her, things just aren't working out. But what it is, is she's seen you for who you really are. So that has nothing to do with your appearance on the outside. <clears throat> Many of the great lovers in history were not attractive at all, as far as appearance goes. Some of them were even ugly. And I can't remember which one said it. I want to say Voltaire or Casanova. But he said, let me talk my way past my ugly face and I can bed the Queen of England. That's not verbatim and I'm not even sure if I have the right... Um, lover there, uh, player, but it's one of those guys, okay? So what he was saying basically is, and I think one of those guys even had a short leg and he walked, he was kind of what they call gimpy, I suppose. But still, he was with many of the beautiful women that other men that were more attractive wanted to be with. How is that? If looks matter and if looks are everything, as I said, looks do matter, but they're not everything. But there's this group or... <clears throat> class of men out there that think if they're not six foot tall and they don't have this certain uh, geometric uh, jawline that they're not gonna, going to be able to get girls. And that's just not true. 
Of course, you'll get more attention from girls if you're good looking, but if you're a man and you're, let's say you're five foot, I have a son, he's five, four, three, five, somewhere in there. He's not very tall, but he picks up a lot of good looking girls. So how does he do that? If height is everything and if looks matter, he's a fairly attractive man, but his attraction lies more in his personality. He can talk. He knows what women like. <clears throat> he knows he's had experience with women and he knows how to, I don't like to use the word play. Let's say it this way. He knows how to converse with women. He knows what women like and thus they like him. So it's more about game, more about your skills, more about your social ability, your social, I will say your social <clears throat> magnetism, so to speak, your charisma than it is your looks. And there's been times in my life where my looks have got my foot in the door, but I really wasn't on my game or I was lacking in self-esteem or self-confidence or I was at a low point. <clears throat> I just wasn't feeling great about myself and I just couldn't get anywhere with a girl. Once I started talking to her, I could tell she was losing interest in me. And there have been other times when I was on my game and I could just about pick up any girl I wanted. So that's the way it works. It's more what's going on inside of you than what's outside. But back to the point of what you can do to improve your looks. If you're not going to the gym, you should start. <clears throat> if you're not running, you're not exercising, if you got a beer belly or a gut on you or you're out of shape, this not only portrays uh, laziness, it portrays a lack of discipline, a lack of character, a lack of inner strength. Because if you had the inner strength of will, you would take better care of your body. Because you're, only, you're going to live in that the rest of your life. These things, that's like a lot of women will tell you that, well, don't you just love me for who I am? And maybe she's obese or quite a bit overweight. But she wasn't when you met her. <clears throat> well, the girl you met had discipline enough and respect enough for herself to take better care of her health. Okay, and now she doesn't. And this happens to men, too. They get married, and they come home and sit on the couch, and they drink beer, and they get fat and lazy. And all the promises of the beautiful life they made their woman, eh, they got their woman now. They don't need to make any promises. They don't need to put on any effort. Or so they think. And then you, before you know it, the woman is talking to other men, she has guy friends, she's eating lunch with, and the next thing you know, she's cheating on you. Very possible. But you're the leader, and you led that relationship into the gutter by not being strong, by not taking care of yourself, by not being an example, because she's going to follow your lead. And if you're not leading, she'll find someone else to lead. And what happened was, you quit leading because you thought you had it all wrapped up. And men do that. And then they want to blame the woman for getting out of shape, getting fat, uh, not taking care of the house, not taking care of the kids, etc., etc. But you gotta look at yourself as a man. How did it get there? How did you allow it to get there? By your weak leadership. But back to looks matter. So you can do something with your hair. And one thing that I really notice in the US is the way people dress. I mean, for me to be dressed up, all I have to do is put on a, uh, a dinner jacket and people think I'm dressed up. And that's because the lack of, <clears throat> I would have to say self-respect for the way people look, they just don't seem to care anymore like they used to. I can pick out the Americans in the airport by the way they're dressed. Uh, for example, my daughter had a couple of her friends come over the other day. Both of them had gray sweats on, sweatpants, sweat top. They look like twins. They weren't, but they look like it. And this is the normal way to dress. I mean, I am always on my daughter about dressing nice. I even bought her some nice clothes. I mean, they're jeans, but they're nice dress jeans, nice blouse tops. I gotta beat her to get her to wear them. I'm joking, I don't beat her, but I gotta, I gotta push her to get her to wear that with some, not tennis shoes or Crocs or flip-flops, just some regular shoes, not high heels, but something with some heels on it. Now that's the way everyone used to dress back when I was younger, but now, the lack of, uh, how do I say, I, I think it, it shows a, cell, a lack of respect. And a lot of guys too, they, they wear these pants half down their ass, okay. And I, uh, maybe, maybe girls are attracted to that, so that's the style. 
that case, I, I won't say too much about that because if your clothes are good and you're dressed like it, that's one thing. But if you're wearing some old sweats and some shirt with a with a, some kind of writing or emblem on it, and it's like hanging out, it looks like it hasn't been washed for a few weeks, and I see a lot of that around here where I live. You should look up people of Walmart on the internet. That'll give you an idea what a lot of people dress like in America, at least here in the Midwest. I've heard in Miami and like in LA, it's a little different, maybe New York too. But even in St. Louis here, it's, it's pretty sad. When I go to the airport, I always dress nice. I wear a, ja a dinner jacket. Um, I'm one of the few. Years ago, almost everyone in the airport dressed like that. Years ago, women wore slacks and or khakis, whatever you want to call them, and a dress or a dress and shoes, not flip-flops, not tennis shoes, not Crocs. And that's the way they dressed when they went out, like if they were going to the airport or they were going to some, or they were going shopping. Even in the 80s, my first wife would always put makeup on before she went to work. Now she didn't put too much makeup on, but she put just enough. She was really good with makeup, fixed her hair. Even when she went to work, she worked at a pizza place. Plus she was going to school. Okay, and she always dressed nice. She would not go out without dressing, without looking good. And most of her friends were the same, but now these girls that pull their hair up, they'll go out, they don't care. I'm just going to Walmart, or I'm just going to Pizza Hut, or I'm just going here. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to run into. Could be the girl of your dreams. And here you're dressed in what, some old t-shirt, ripped up a little bit, pair of sweatpants, flip-flops, your hair's not fixed. I mean, I always fix my hair. The only time you'll see me where I'm not sharply dressed, well, I'm not too sharply dressed now. Actually, I have a shirt with writing on it. It's my son's. Yeah, there you go. I normally don't wear those, but he had it. And he said, hey, you want that? I said, yeah, I'll take it. Now, I wouldn't go out. If I had a jacket on and had that covered up, I would be okay with that. And I have gone out like that. But it's so important because contrary to what people want to believe or want you to believe or wish were true, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover or don't judge people by how they look. Everybody does. So what you look like makes the first impression before you ever open your mouth. You never get a, another chance, what is this? You never get a second chance to make a first impression. So make sure that impression, which is what they're gonna see, is good. Then after that, it's up to you. What do you have on the inside? As I said, if you don't have anything on the inside, doesn't matter what you look like, how you're dressed, it's not going to help. But something else you'll find when you start dressing better, you start feeling better about yourself. Walk straight, walk with good posture. It's almost like when you walk with good posture, you feel like you're, you got a, like one of these little cock roosters, you got your chest stuck out there, but then that changes your state of mind. You start feeling differently about yourself. Everything is an inside job, but sometimes you have to act your way into feeling like you're the man, which means wear the right clothes, dress right, carry yourself properly, speak properly, speak with clarity, power, authority, and definition. Sometimes I get a little messed up on my words because I get excited. I love what I do and I speak a little too fast and I don't get the words completely pronounced. You should always speak as if you're speaking to a second language speaker because you have to pronounce your words clearly and definitely. And I am as guilty of not doing that as anyone because when we speak amongst ourselves, we have a tendency to not finish our words. I'll give you a little example. What'd you do last night? Now you understand what I said, but think about that. What'd you do? Now, if I said, what did you do last night? You may think that's a little strange. But when you're speaking to someone, let's say in a club setting or when there's a lot of noise around, it's difficult for them to hear you. And this also when you pronounce your words with power and let's say decisiveness and clarity, this also portrays a sense of inner strength. And this is what women are attracted to, is inner strength, your character, what do you have on the inside? That's what women fall in love with. Women fall in love through their ears and men fall in love through their eyes. And women stay in love through their ears and men stay in love through their eyes. 
So if you're a woman and you're watching this and you've let yourself go and you don't have any character and you don't have uh, what you did when you two got together and your husband is looking around or your boyfriend, this is why. But I'm not sure what he's doing either. Also, like I said, the man is the leader. I know many people who have gotten older and they don't look the same way they did, but, but the woman has character and integrity and the man does too. They love each other, they accept each other, and that's a whole different deal. There's a bond there because they have bonded um, emotionally and, and on the inside. Through hard times, through good times, through bad times, through fun times, through all kinds of things, they develop this bond. They stick together. And that's a rare thing these days. I'm thinking of my, uh, my, uh, my cousin and her husband. They've been together for many years. And I highly respect this man. And I think a lot of my cousin also. Um, so people do still stay together. There's a 50% chance that you'll get divorced if you get married. <clears throat> but then again, there's a 50% chance that you won't. But for a man, it's a big risk here in the U.S. And I won't go into that. That's another video. We'll talk about that some other day. But right now, we're talking about looks matter and looks do matter. But they don't matter forever and they don't matter for everything. And as I said, they just get your foot in the door. But you have to get your foot in the door. Like the old salesman, he would stick his foot in the door so you couldn't shut it on him. Okay, you have to get your foot in the door. So at least dress nicely enough that she is somewhat attracted to you when she sees you so you can get your foot in the door, so you can start speaking to her, so you can let her get, a, get an idea of what you're like, to have the opportunity to see if she does like you. And that's up to you. But also remember, when you're going up to talk to her, don't go up to talk to her with the idea of, well, I hope she likes me. That comes from a position of weakness and of neediness and of scarcity. You're walking up to her to see if you think you're going to see if you're going to like her. Because you're just seeing what she looks like. Maybe you think she's beautiful. Maybe you think she's the most beautiful girl you've ever seen. And you want to meet her. And you do. But until you get to know her, you really don't know what she's like. I've met many beautiful women. And once I got to know them, they weren't so beautiful. I've also met other women who weren't so beautiful. And the more I got to know them, the more beautiful they become. So for us men, we like personality too. That makes a lot of difference. Of course, men will go out and jump in the sack with some girl if he thinks she's beautiful, whether she's got a personality or not, whether he likes her attitude or not. Women are less likely to do that. Even modern women, they will do it if they're drinking, but it's not the same as men. And that's one of the reasons... <clears throat> I think that has part to do with why if a woman has a high body count, it's looked down upon or frowned upon by men and society. As opposed to a man, if he has a high body count, he's admired and looked, looked up to as a player, a Chad, a, uh, the man, so to speak. So the difference is, a man can sleep with a lot of women and it really doesn't make any difference because he doesn't have to be emotionally attracted to them. As opposed to a woman, she has to be, more, than, more often than not, I'm talking in generalizations, attracted to that man on some kind of emotional level. For a man to mess around on a woman, to, to be with another, uh, another woman, she's more angry if he has an emotional bond with this other woman than if he just went and slept with her. As where a man, if she has sex with another man, that just pisses him off even though it hurts him and he doesn't want to have anything to do with her anymore, usually. It's kind of a evolutionary program deal where it's paternity where, <clears throat> and I've been with women who've cheated on me and afterwards, it's just never the same for me. I can't, I suppose I can't trust them anymore. It's like they were disloyal to me. <clears throat> and men have this thing about loyalty that women don't understand. And of course, for us men, there's many things that women have uh, between themselves that we don't understand. And we will never understand because we're not women. But the point is, when a woman sleeps around with another man, she has to have some kind, usually, some kind of an emotional attachment to him. But with a man, he can just go out and have sex and go on. Doesn't mean much to him. 
So that's one of the reasons I believe that plays into the fact, uh, into the idea and the social stigma that if women have a high body count, their value is lower, and a man has a high body count, his value is higher. I mean, honestly, myself, I've been with quite a few women, but I do not, and from my experience, I don't wanna be with a woman who's had a lot of men because, now you might say, well, you've had a lot of women, what's the difference, and you got kids, and you got this, because it doesn't work. The women that I have tried to have LTR with that have been with a lot of men, they just can't stay faithful. Things get a little rough, they're ready to jump off to another guy. It's easy for them to go have sex and to mate up with another guy because they've done it so many times. It's like anything you do. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. Okay, as opposed to a woman who's never been with anybody else except you, and I've had more than a few of those, and I've had women that have only been with one, two, or three other guys, and I've had relationships with them. Okay, they're more apt to stick it out if things get tough and work things out with you. They're more cooperative. They're not so ready to go jump off and have sex with another guy and mate with him and bond with him. Pair bond. It's a statistical fact that women who have had double digit body count, we'll say it that way, have more of a difficult time or can't pair bond as well as women who are in the single digits. I mean, statistics can be manipulated, but I find that to be true in my own personal life and I've seen it in the lives of other men and women also. So that's something to think about if you're a woman. Value yourself. Remember that a man of value does not want a woman who slept with a lot of men. It's just not the same. It's not, all a woman has to do, especially if she's attractive, is say yes. The man actually has to put out some effort. He has to be a man of value. He has to have something to be able to get these women to sleep with him. As opposed to a woman, she could get on the phone right now and call over a couple of beta orbiters and they'll sleep with her in a minute. So that's another part. They don't have to work for it, they just say yes. And anything that we have to work for as a society and, and in humanity, we admire people who have to work for something. And we admire those things and we desire those things. But if it's free and just given to us, we have a tendency to just take it for granted and, and the value is less. So for women, maintain your value. Don't buy into the society's uh, push or our programming or idea that you can just go out and have sex with all these different guys and men will still look at you the same because they're not going to. Now, I'm not saying that's fair or right. I'm just telling you that's the way it is. And you men, be very careful when you're vetting girls for long-term relationships. If they've had high sexual, high body counts, your chances are lower and slimmer that that's going to work out for you. It's just too easy for them to go on to another guy. Now, how do you know if they have high body counts? We're getting way off the of subject here, but, but we'll finish up with this. You can tell, I'll give you an example. I went out with this girl once, she was from another country, and she knew the hotels. There's a red flag right there. All right, why does she know the hotels? Because she's been at the hotels with men. She doesn't just go to hotels by herself, okay? Another thing, as soon as we finished having sex, she jumped up and took a shower. Uh, before that, when we got back to the room after we had dinner, she took her clothes off and got in bed. And I could go on and on. Let me see, what's a couple more? Um, anyway, there's quite a few more, but those are two or three red flags. That tells you she's been with quite a few men because she took her clothes off. A woman that hasn't been with very many men is going to be a little nervous She's probably going to have you take her clothes off. You're going to have to do it a little at a time. She may even resist and push your hand away when you try to take off her top. Uh, there are different things they do. You can tell that they haven't been with a lot of men. So these things are important if you're looking for someone to pair bond with or for a long-term relationship. But I gotta stop there because we're off topic. The topic was, do looks matter? And yes, looks do matter, just to get your foot in the door. Remember that. What you got on the inside is more important than that because even guys that are challenged in the looks department can pick up and date and have LTRs with some beautiful women. That's all I have time for today. If you'd like to get my help personally, you can 
contact me at my website, marksinspiration.com. Have a great day.